and welcome to another video for the art of learning small town business and uh, today we're going to continue with our business plan and uh, we're going to do uh, part six of ten and if you've missed any of the other parts of the business plan they're all in the description below so uh, by all means go down and uh, take advantage of that if you haven't already and today we're going to talk about uh, part six of the marketing plan, business plan for a small town. And we're going to do the marketing and sales plan part. And this is this is pretty important uh, part of your uh, of your uh, overall business plan because this is this is how you're going to get the message out to the folks that are going to buy your product or service. So the things that we've assembled so far are going to be part of that. So. Let's jump right in, and uh, but actually before we do that, uh, let me uh, ask you please to subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're here to help your small business survive and grow and develop, and we would appreciate very much your support, and uh, we will certainly support you, no question about that. But uh, subscribe, ring the notification bell, you'll always be notified whenever we do another podcast, and of course, leave a comment We'd like to know uh, what's the population of the town where you're watching us from. What's the population of your town there? So uh, we would appreciate uh, that very much. So let's jump right in because uh, we're going to do step one, and that is start by creating a business resume. You know, what exactly is a business resume, and what does that what does that mean? Well, if you were going out to uh, if you're going out to get a job. Uh, the first thing you would do is prepare a resume that shows your abilities and expertise and education and all of that, work experience, all those things. And this is a document, the business resume is a document that we want to create uh, within the company. Uh, this is not necessarily to give the customers or anything like that, uh, because actually what you're trying to do is get customers to hire you to either uh, provide a product or a service to them. So before we can identify ourselves to the customer, we have to identify ourselves to ourselves. <laughs> as as uh, funny as that may sound, uh, and that's what we're going to talk about. So let's talk about how do we create a business resume? Well, uh, what we're going to do is, as I mentioned earlier, part of the things that we've already talked about are in this already. Uh, we've done a review of the company and the products. You've described those in the last uh, episode we uh, we aired. Uh, we need to analyze the target market. Who are the people most likely to buy your products or services? And we also need to know sales and market share. How much of the market where you're going to do business can you um, can you uh, take uh, away from? Uh, well, there's only two ways to get customers. <laughs> One is you steal them uh, from your competitors, or the other way is you create a customer where there has not been a customer before. Now, how do you do that? Well, for example, when a child turns 16, they get a driver's license, they become a tire customer, they become an insurance customer, a, a oil change customer, a gasoline customer. So they uh, are entering a marketplace and they're bringing money that was not there before. Next, what's the attitude and awareness of your product? Uh, is your product hazardous to the environment? Uh, are people aware of this particular product? Uh, people are aware of, uh, you know, mechanics, landscapers, all of those things. Um, but if you have a brand new product that no one's ever heard of, um, you're going to have to spend some money to develop an awareness of that product in the marketplace. So. We've got to analyze that. What's the attitude and awareness of your product? Next, we've got to talk about purchase rates and buying habits. Here in Montana, where I live, uh, we don't sell a whole lot of skis in June and July. But uh, during the winter months when skiing uh, is open and uh, we sell a lot of skis here. So uh, depending on the product or service you have, people may buy it every month. They might buy it every week. They might buy it every six months. But we need to know that. So we, we have to plan for, we're not going to advertise skis in June and July. So we're going to save that advertising money for something else. And product pricing. Are you going to advertise your product pricing? Well, uh, if you do, 
um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Your competitor will know what you're what you're charging, but real estate people do it all the time. Uh, this house is two two hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. It's not three hundred thousand. It's two thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. Two hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. And we've got to analyze the competition. Is there competition in your um, in your uh, selling area? And if so, how formidable are they? Because what's going to happen is the the tougher they are, the longer it's going to take for you to rise up to their level. And it's going to take more money probably to do that in operating costs, advertising, and just being open. So we got to advertise the competition. Can we beat them out, or can we at least? Uh, is there room for another uh, type of your business in uh, this particular uh, sales area that you're trying to uh, to ascertain? And we got to analyze demand. What's the demand for your product? Now that goes into the purchase rates and buying habits as well. But we need to analyze: Is there an actual demand for this product, whether it's monthly, yearly, or whatever it is? And customer service, we've got to figure out what to do with that. Now, customer service guidelines. Uh, here's the rule. Here's the rule for customer service. You provide the best customer service you can day in and day out, and still be profitable. That's the rule. You have to be profitable. So, whatever service you can deliver day in and day out, and still make a profit is good. You're probably not going to send a limo to get your customers. So uh, that would be great customer service, but it's not gonna it's not going to uh, work for the bottom line. So, so you probably are not gonna do that. So, so uh, there we are. So the next step uh, after we've done this business resume here, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have some issues that we've got to look at. So we need to do what is called a SWOT analysis. A SWOT analysis is. Uh, a document that uh, that will show you strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So the strengths of your business we found in your business resume are the things you do well. Things that uh, the things that uh, you do well at the moment. Uh, we'll always try and improve those, but those are your strengths at the moment. Weaknesses to the right are usually temporary. Uh, I could use another delivery truck, but we don't have the budget right now. But uh, down the road we will. So this is these are things that you need to work on. These are things that the competitor may have an advantage of, but we still need to go after weaknesses and see what we can do with those. Opportunities are going to come up. It might be sales from vendors. It might be a, a new location pops up at a good price. It could be anything. But uh, we have to be able to take advantage of opportunities. So part of your budget is going to be set aside to take care of when opportunities arise. You'll have the dollars for it because I can almost guarantee you that most businesses, when opportunities come up, there's no money there for them. And threats. This would be competition. Uh, it could be uh, uh, regulations of the city, zoning uh, reg uh, regulations. Uh, Whatever could be a could be a, a whole bunch of whole bunch of stuff. So strengths, opportunities, uh, weaknesses, and threats are what we uh, are what we need to uh, address and keep uh, on top of. So, all right, uh, let's see. Step three, we've got to do sales forecasting. So, what does it take to keep the doors open? So you are going to have a certain amount of expenses each month to keep yourself in business. So whether you're a home-based business or whether you're a storefront or um, you know somewhere in between, if you're an online business, uh, you're still going to have uh, costs each month that are going to have to be paid. So uh, what? How much money is it going to take for you to operate month to month and still make uh, some kind of um, earning for yourself uh, or uh, if you have a bank loan or something like that, how long are, is that bank loan going to provide uh, the mortgage and the other things that you need uh, before uh, before the money runs out and you're still not at the break-even level yet? So, so these are things we've got to consider. 
uh, sales forecasting. What does it take? What's it going to take to keep the doors open? So, all right. And in step four, we've got to identify our target market. These are the people that are going to be our best customers. Uh, how old are they? What's their education? What's their income? Where do they live? Um, you know, are they uh, are they tall, short, fat, thin, old, young? Uh, what are they? Who are these people? We've got to identify them. Who are the people most likely to want to buy your particular product? Because it's very important that we, if we're advertising to the wrong people, then we're just really wasting a lot of money. And we can't afford to do that when we're starting up a business or when we're we're planning to expand or do any of these other things that we're, that we're talking about as we go through this business plan, uh, business plan situation. So in order to do some of these things, obviously, we're going to have to set some goals, objectives and strategies uh, that we're going to use to uh, uh, to make this business work. So we're going to have to set some goals for how much business are we going to do, how soon and when is when is that going to happen? And we talked about this before in other uh, some of our other uh, 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 podcasts is uh, smart goals. Uh, goals, you need to set goals that are specific. Uh, they need to be measurable. There has to be a way to track the progress. Uh, they've got to be attainable. Uh, we have to create a goal that is realistic. And uh, can we attain it with the, um, with the resources we have at the moment? So the, that's what we have to consider. Are the goals relevant? Uh, the goal must align with the organization. So is this goal something that's going to improve our business? And it's got to be, there's got to be a time limit. There has to be a time when uh, that, uh, that goal is uh, done. And uh, we, uh, then we can see, uh, was, that, uh, was that done correctly? Uh, was it, uh, did we achieve that goal? Uh, how, did that, how did that work out? So. So yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to have to do uh, goals and uh, strategy. So uh, keep in mind smart goals. We talked about that in one of the other podcasts. So uh, those uh, all of the other podcasts uh, links are in the description below. So if you missed anything or if you're just joining us now, all the previous ones are down there. So you can start from the beginning or if there's a <clears throat> topic you're having an issue with, you can do that as well. So anytime. So. All right. Next, we've got to we've got to figure out an advertising position. Now, what is positioning? Well, uh, first person to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean, Charles Lindbergh. Uh, you probably have no idea who the second person was. That would, of course, be the household name of Bert Hinkler. Uh, Bert's the second guy to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. Well, if you didn't know the second guy, you probably figure the third one is. Uh, nowhere you're, you're not going to know who the third one is, but you probably do because it was Amelia Earhart was the third person to fly solo across the Atlantic. Now, was Amelia the third person to fly solo across the Atlantic or the first what? She was the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic. So that's what positioning is. It puts your business in a position away from Bert Hankler and Charles Lindbergh. It puts you first in a category. And that's what positioning is. And that's what you need to think about. What what makes your business position first in the mind and the perception of your customer? And I realize that's not easy, but ask your friends, ask your uh, co-workers, uh, whoever, whoever's helping you with the, with the business, uh, ask, ask customers, potential customers, uh, what they think of, what do you think of when you think of our business? What pops into your mind? So. We've got to uh, we've got to have that we've got to have that uh, that positioning because that's going to determine where we advertise and that's also going to uh, what are we going to say to our target market so very important step seven uh, what do we say how do we say it and where do we say it so this is where we're going to put our message and how do we know where to put our message that of course is the is the um, important uh, thing to talk about here. So, so uh, we got to talk about getting the message out. So are we going to advertise products and services? Are we going to advertise our 
Are we going to concentrate on our brand name, our company image, pricing? Uh, uh, do we do installation of products? So are we going to advertise our expertise? And what is very important, what is our unique selling position? Our unique selling position. And that's what separates us from the other uh, folks in our uh, that are competing against us. So we need to we need to establish what is our unique selling position. What are we gonna? What is the top thing we do that we do really well that maybe the competition's a little slow at or not as good at? Uh, promotions. Are we gonna are we gonna do promotions and how are we gonna advertise those? What's our advertising message going to be? What is it? Are we going to advertise our products and services? Are we going to advertise our company, uh, the integrity of uh, who we are? Uh, what is the advertising message going to be? I'm not sure why I put that in there twice, but I guess it's worth uh, I guess it's worth saying twice. Um, advertising media. Are we going to what media is available to us in a smaller town? There may not be a lot of media available to you, so it might be flyers. It might be uh, if you have a local radio or uh, maybe you got a weekly newspaper, uh, something like that. Uh, but uh, yeah, you you're going to have to figure out how are we going to advertise and what media are we going to use? And particularly what target market does that media uh, reach? And merchandising, if we have a storefront, our merchandising is very important, how we present the products and services and things like that. And can we get publicity? Uh, grand openings uh, sometimes get uh, publicity. Uh, you can certainly make an announcement on the paper and uh, run an ad, things like that. And you can also use your website. We use your website to introduce your employees to, uh, to uh, the community. And uh, you can show your products and services. And uh, you don't have to spend a ton on a website. Uh, you know, if you got the time, learn to do it yourself or get someone to help you with it. You can take uh, videos with your phone and uh, they'll be just as good as anything, uh, any of the TV uh, stations and anybody like that can uh, put out. So, uh, so don't, uh, don't treat your website lightly. You can also, uh, websites, you can also introduce sales. You can have all kinds of great uh, benefits from your website. Uh, it should be on your business card, should be on your vehicle, should be on all your letterheads, envelopes, uh, uh, business cards, uh, anything the customer gets, invoices, all those should have the website included in there. So, all right. Um, now, We've got to talk about, um, we need something to keep all this stuff in order because we're going to, as we set our marketing plans in motion, we're going to, um, uh, you know, let's say, uh, okay, uh, right now when I'm doing this, uh, we're at the end of May. Okay. So, uh, maybe we're going to have a sale in July. Okay. So I need to get a calendar out and I need to say, okay, who's going to do what in July to get ready for this? When are we going to, when are we going to get the final proofs of the ad for the sale? Uh, when are we going to uh, go on radio or when are we going to go on TV or when do the mailers go out or all of these things? We need to have an advertising calendar that will, uh, will let us know what's going on and when. So we'll, uh, we'll create something like this on the screen and we'll have, uh, we can have events, we can have uh, advertising and when, when advertising will be done, uh, who's going to do it and we'll have the dates and all of that will be, will be uh, in the advertising calendar. So we can put this up on the wall and we can have a daily uh, perception of what's going to happen and who's going to do it and when is it going to be done and uh, make sure that it all happens when it's, when it's supposed to. Next, uh, <laughs> after we do the uh, advertising uh, calendar, uh, we're ready to execute the plan and evaluate the results. So we've gone through all of these steps. We've gone through these eight steps so far. And the ninth step is we've got to put it out there and see what happens. And, you know, we may fall flat on our face. It may be a great success. We may have identified our target market correctly. Our advertising message is great. 
we got all the right people going and uh, you know the business uh, the business could uh, very easily uh, take off and uh, you know just be great over uh, over a long period of time but what do we do if it's not working well that's a <laughs> what do we do then what do we do well the uh, the answer to that is uh, we've got to go back to the beginning because we we missed something we've got to go back to the business resume and we've got to start over what do we we must have missed something. Did we misidentify our target market? Our products and services, uh, uh, are they uh, not described properly? Um, is our sales forecasting off? Is, um, uh, you know, are we advertising in the wrong media to reach the target market that we thought we had identified so correctly? So all of these things are critical as we go through uh, this, um, you know, building this business, uh, this business plan. But the marketing part of it is probably the most critical part. Uh, your resume has three parts. Uh, one third of it is the business, how it's run, who are the principals, all of that. The uh, description of the business, products and services. And one third is the financials that we're gonna deal with coming up in the next few uh, episodes here. And of course, the uh, the big dog in the middle is the marketing plan. And that's the most critical thing because we've got to do our research on uh, all of these things. And um, in the description below, uh, we've got a, uh, I've got a link to the small business development centers. They will help you identify your target market. They'll help you with your sales forecasting. They'll help you with uh, uh, competition in your particular zip code and they're free they're paid for with your tax dollars so uh, don't forget to uh, go over and uh, check them out so uh, it's uh, it's a great uh, it's a great service it really is it's it's really uh, it's really good so all right hey don't forget to subscribe ring the notification bell like us don't forget to leave a comment down below where are you watching us from or what's the population of your small town or are there business challenges out there that we can address in future videos. By all means, uh, let us know uh, what's going on there. So, all right, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. And uh, when we come back the next time, we'll be talking about, we're gonna get into business financials. So we're gonna tell you all about uh, those. And so uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be doing that in the next video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.